watching Sunday Morning Matters on KC24, your local election headquarters. Is the Trump administration trying to derail the high-speed rail project? This after the Federal Rail Administration ripped up its agreement with California, canceling a billion-dollar payment to help build it. That's how we ring the round two bell for our panel. Jim Veros, Lupe Espinoza, and Ricardo Franco. Guys, welcome back. And, uh, you know, Ricardo, I'll start here because, you know, we hear Assemblyman Jim Patterson. He's been saying this from day one. This has been the project that has gone all wrong. Um, is this the final nail in the coffin, you think, with the feds and the Trump administration now canceling this pay payment and trying to get their $2.5 billion back as well? A absolutely not. And I'll, and I'll tell you, there's one reason you can look at it, and it's because my generation, the younger generation of presidents, mm -hmm. and under, understand that public transportation isn't just for people who can't afford a car. It's something that's very efficient. It's something that we have to gear ourselves towards, too, if we want to combat climate change. And realistically, when we have hubs like L.A. and San Francisco that provide us so many business opportunities in professional services, but, but yet are still a distance away, not yet. But we Not still yet. have to find a way to complete it. This is really right. just a spar between the president and California all over again. He just wants to destroy everything that is California or that Obama did previously. Well, he could help us out and say, hey, what can we do to get this done? Instead, But Governor Newsom didn't do any, himself any favors by shrinking the, the rail um, route. Uh, so, Lupe, I'll come to you. I, you know, Governor Newsom hasn't really talked about this in, in his latest budget, but it's brewing, and it doesn't seem like it's going to get any easier, it could prolong it. Right. But and uh, I'm glad that the president is putting a stop to this. This is actually a nightmare. This has been going on since, what, 2010? Um, it doubled, practically doubled in, in budget before it started. And all we have is some eyesores in the Central Valley and some people who got their land taken. So I just don't see why anybody would pour any more money into this. Maybe we could put a halt to it, redesign or uh, plan this out better. And like you know, Mr. Um, mm -hmm. Franco says here, uh, maybe think about how it can be done at, at another time. But I think pouring money, more money and more money, it, it's just taxpayer money. Yeah, and, and Jim, I was just saying, who suffers the most here? This isn't going anywhere. When Cal, when State of California wants to buy something, they buy something. I know you said this before. And it's but, not. It, listen, they, it's not going anywhere. But they, where are they going to keep getting the money? California always finds a way to come up with money. It's bonds, baby. Come on, <laughs> when they want to buy something, they're going to buy it. This is going to be Gavin Newsom versus Donald Trump. And I'm sorry, this is just politics. They're going to have this hemmed up in the courts, and the construction is going to continue, and they're going to keep building this thing. Is it ever going to get completed? I don't know, but the yeah. state of California is going to keep their own money at this thing because they're know. not going to let President Trump cancel it, and it's going to be more politics, and there's going to be more checks cut. Well, Governor Gavin Newsom doesn't want to cancel Obamacare going on tour for his health care plan. Take a listen. I'm committed uh, to pursuing an inquiry and see how far we can go on uh, the topic of universal health care. And I believe a single payer financing system is the best way uh, to achieve that goal. Newsom says he wants to push back against federal dismantling of Obamacare. He, along with lawmakers, say they want to reinstate the individual mandate recently eliminated by the Trump administration. That plan will penalize Californians who don't have health insurance. But Newsom says it's necessary in the long run. Lupe, I'll come to you. Is this plan damaging to Californians without health care at this point? I think it is. I, I don't think that um, mandating uh, or, and then fining someone for not having something, you can't compel people to buy things. And I know that in Obamacare, it was ruled, you know, constitutional. It's a tax. Um, I don't see this as a sustainable way of fixing the health care issues that we have or even helping everybody who needs insurance or needs coverage. Um, we have people leaving California in droves. Who's going to pay for it? Mm. Who's uh, going to pay for it? Ricardo, and who is going to pay for it? I mean, health care is a huge problem. We can't, we can't solve it on the federal level. How can we solve it on the state level? We can't solve it on the federal level because all the insurance companies keep pouring their money into elected officials. And that's the real problem here. Healthcare doesn't work in the private sector under regular rules of supply, demand, and price. The purchaser goes in there, gets told what they're going to buy, 
and neither of them even know what the price is. So the free market system does not traditionally work. But so I applaud the, the, the governor for trying to do something yeah. at least here until we can get Medicare for all passed. Do the something, but the, I don't, the plan isn't real concrete to me. Jim, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it's really not concrete. There's a couple of things that are missing from the plan that, that was interesting. Who negotiates the contracts between the state of California and the hospitals mm -hmm. and, and what they're charging? Uh, what happens to folks that have insurance that... Um, uh, that want to keep their coverage, such as teachers and such as uh, uh, municipal workers and, and, and whatnot. Uh, are, what happens to um, insurance plans that folks that, that want to buy into it, but uh, their kids aren't covered and whatnot. It's very, very basic right now. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to be interested in seeing what the American Hospital Association says about this. You have a lot of uh, the Nurses Association. You have a lot of groups here who really, really like it the way it is. Now, you may not like the mandate for, to make people buy insurance, but hospitals cannot refuse people mm -hmm. in their door. So I'm sorry, but if, if you don't have insurance, something happens to you. The hospital get, has to take you in, and that gets passed off to us okay. right now. So listen, it's, it's a huge, huge right. um, uh, problem. For, it's for a the, battle. It's a battle for the state of California, but uh, the devil definitely is in the details and stuff like this, and you don't have them yet. And most importantly, too, you have to remember, this is going to try He's trying to do something to save and get this burden off of smaller and medium-sized businesses. You know, I don't know anyone who opens a business because they want to give health insurance to people. Well, he certainly uh, has the legislature in his palm of his hand at this point in time, but we'll see how it moves along. I know we wanted to talk about the DMV, but guys, something tells me we'll be talking about the DMV sometime <laughs> down the line. So it's okay. We'll get to it at another point. Hey, lady, gents, thank you so much Absolutely. for no coming here.